Hey everyone, today I'm going to tell you something really exciting. There has been a ruling in favor of same-sex marriage in Japan. Hi everyone, welcome to the Jason Brock channel. I'm Jason Brock and today I'm talking about same-sex marriage in Japan and what this new court ruling means to the future of same-sex marriage in Japan. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and like the video and comment. I will answer your questions if I can or try to refer you to someone who can. Um, but yeah, I, let's get started. So a court ruled just yesterday, which was March 17th, um, that the government's ban on gay marriage is not constitutional. So. In the Japanese constitution, there is a, a part, a clause, that says that marriage is allowed with the consent of both sexes. Um, and the there's a group called Marriage for mm -hmm. All Japan, and um, they are arguing that the constitution didn't mean to ban um, marriage between both sexes. The reason that is in there, and even both sexes is a little bit ambiguous. You could interpret that as two males or two females, you know. But uh, most people have taken it to mean before that it's man and woman, both sexes. So, but the reason that uh, people who are putting these cases in court, uh, that they're saying it's, that it is constitutional is that that phrase was meant to make sure both people getting married uh, gave their own consent. Like, they weren't forced to be married. And, uh, like, women were not supposed to be treated like property to be traded and married off. So that's why that's in there. It wasn't to prohibit same-sex marriage. So that's the argument that the lawyers and the plaintiffs in these cases uh, are, are using in their... Um, in their court cases. And as you may know, Japan is one of the only G7 nations, oh, sorry, the only one that doesn't fully recognize same-sex marriage right now. So Japan is a little behind in that sense. And Japan is a little different in a lot of ways um, when it comes to how uh, LGBTQ plus people are treated. I've talked about that in other videos actually. But, um, it, I feel, I personally think it's fair to have same-sex marriage as an option, and I don't really see the argument why it shouldn't be uh, an option. So I think a lot of, actually I know a lot of Japanese people feel the same way. There have been surveys done. Pew Research did a survey that showed the percentage of people accepting of LGBTQ people. Um, so... I know that most Japanese people, there have been other surveys done, at least one, that show that they wouldn't care, you know, or they support it or wouldn't mind if same-sex marriage was approved. So the thing that's different about Japan is, that you may not know is LGBTQ people aren't exactly, other than this group, this group is definitely pushing, but a lot of people, individuals, are not pushing the government to give them same-sex marriage equality rights and in my opinion from conversations I've had from things I've read I think that's just perhaps a more Japanese approach when you think about uh, the Japanese way of being it's not exactly normal to uh, spout off your personal business to everyone like who you're married to or that you're gay or not that's something in the West that we would do or that we might even think is important. But in Japan, it's not so much about being different and trying to stand out. In fact, it's quite the opposite, I would say, in general. Of course, there are exceptions, and so I'm not uh, including everyone in that. But I am very happy that this group of lawyers and couples are taking their cases to court and Marriage for All Japan is helping with this. Um, but yeah, so Article 24 of the Constitution in, in of Japan's Constitution, 
It says, yes, marriage is based on the mutual consent of both sexes, which is currently interpreted to mean it's legal only between a man and a woman. But, and I'm reading from an NPR article here, which I can put a link on uh, up for in the description. Um, but the Sapporo District Court, this is in Hokkaido. That's the most northern island. You know, Japan has four main islands and Hokkaido is the most far north. The Sapporo District Court, Sapporo is the city in Hokkaido, found that banning same-sex marriages violates Article 14 of the Constitution, which prohibits discrimination due to race, creed, sex, social status, or family origin. And it's said that because sexual orientation is not a choice, it's discriminatory not to afford marital benefits to the same-sex couples. So even though Article 14 of the Constitution of Japan doesn't say sexual orientation, it does say creed, sex, social status. You could arguably apply that to sexual orientation. And lucky for us, the Hokkaido court agreed. Um, and so this is an important ruling. Um, why it is important also, it's not going to give people in Japan same-sex marriage equality right away. It just sets a precedent. Just like American courts, the American court system is very similar to the Japanese court system. And in fact, the government structure is, the constitution is, um, thanks in large part to Japan being defeated by the U.S. I'm not trying to say what's good or bad about that, but, but the U.S. came and sort of reorganized the government, including the constitution. So the constitution has a lot of American elements, in case you didn't know that. Um, but anyway... The, this court decision, over time, will, it, will, it sets a precedent, right? And when future courts decide, or even the Supreme Court of Japan, when they get this case, which hopefully they will, um, that will set precedent, and those judges can use that precedent to influence their decision on making it legal across the nation. Um, now, there are five cases... There were five cases. Th that was one of five. There's also cases in Osaka, Nagoya, Fukuoka, and Tokyo, where I am right now. Those four cases are uh, coming up, but we're hopeful, and many people who want same-sex marriage in Japan are hopeful, that we'll get similar decisions. And if so, it makes it much more likely for same-sex marriage to be approved on the federal level in Japan. And that would be amazing. I mean, for example, for me personally as an American, if I wanted to marry a Japanese person, I could get married and become a citizen or I don't know what you call it, permanent resident. Whatever you get when you marry someone, you know, like in America, if you marry, marry a foreigner, they become American. Well, you could do that in Japan too. You can do that in Japan right now, but only if you're a heterosexual couple. So I don't have the opportunity. And that's not the only thing that's missing. It's not just about foreign marriage. Um, so let me just tell you a little more from this article. Um, so legal, this is what the court said, the Sapporo Hokkaido court. Legal benefits stemming from marriage marriages should equally benefit both homosexuals and heterosexuals. Oh my god! Do you know how good it is to hear a, J a court in Japan say that? It's wonderful. Okay, so the six plaintiffs, two male couples and one female couple, according to the Jam Japan Times, had asked for 1 million yen, about $9,000 in US dollars, per person in damages citing the pain of not being able to legally marry. Now, uh, just a little insight into that. Asking for money is part of how they got the suit into the court, not just arguing that it's unconstitutional, that they can't get married. They have to show some kind of harm to them, 
So that part was to demonstrate, hey, we are suffering because we can't get married and we want damages. And also, this is unconstitutional. And they were hoping the court would make a ruling that showed that. And they did. Okay, anyway, they didn't get the money, but they got the ruling. And that's way more important than the money. I think the plaintiffs would agree. I think anyone who wants same-sex marriage would agree that getting the ruling in favor of same-sex marriage being, uh, not being banned, that's very important. Okay, so, um, LGBTQ advocates are celebrating the first of its kind ruling, which they hope will set a precedent for other marriage equality cases pending in district courts across the country, which I told you about. Um, until the ruling was announced, we didn't know this was what we'd get, and I'm just overjoyed, said Gon Matsunaka, director of the activist group Marriage for All Japan and president of the Pride House Tokyo Consortium. I, sadly, I don't know Pride House Tokyo, but I know Marriage for All Japan. Um, the, he said it's valuable. It's absolutely measureless in value. So true. But um, Marriage for All Japan, just a, a note, you can find their website, Marriage for All Japan, just Google it, and you can actually donate to them to help them in their cause, even pay for uh, legal costs um, or other costs associated with the trial. I'm going to put that link in the description too, because it would be great if you can donate. I donated myself as much as I could, but I'm, I'm sure anything would help if you care about this issue. Um, that's Marriage for All Japan. <clears throat> So, um, this is the first of the five cases to get a verdict, which turned out great. A total of 13 couples filed lawsuits on Valentine's Day 2019 in Sapporo, Tokyo, Osaka, and Nagoya. And uh, another three couples filed in Fukuoka several months later. But the Valentine's Day, I believe, was symbolic. I'm sure you could imagine. Um... Their lawyers argue the text of Japan's constitution was intended to force prevented marriage, uh, sorry, prevent forced marriages, like I was saying, rather than explicitly prohibit same-sex marriage. Uh, also, something that perhaps moved the Hokkaido court to rule in favor of the couples, the same-sex couples, um, is that since 2015, there have been various uh, municipalities or prefectures or even cities or, or wards that they're sometimes called, like in Tokyo, that have been issuing same-sex certificates. It's not marriage, but you know, it's kind of like domestic partnership or civil union certificates. Um, they don't confer legal status equivalent to marriage, but allow for shared rental agreements and hospital visitation rights. Um, and as of January, 74 areas in Japan, municipalities, were, were giving these certificates out. So I think that the fact that that has been happening over time might have influenced this court decision. And it will probably influence the overall decisions in these other court cases and what happens ultimately on the federal level for same-sex marriage in Japan. Um... However, same-sex couples, as of now, even with that certificate or a union thing, um, they can't inherit their partner's assets. Um, they can't be parents of their partner's children. The, this ruling doesn't change government policy. A new law is needed in order to change everything completely, but it, it helps. Also, um, there's an openly gay politician named... Kanoko Otsuji, Kanoko Otsuji, and they said it, they were truly, truly happy about the verdict and urged the legislature to deliberate a proposed amendment to the civil code to make same-sex marriage possible. And that's really good because that's a person in the government urging the government to look at this. So um, it's a lot of momentum happening. And according to Reuters... Uh, uh, the chief cabinet secretary, uh, Katsunobu Kato, Katsunobu Kato, 
told a news conference that the governor, the government would carefully watch the outcomes of the remaining court cases. So if they go well, we might be expecting some change soon. I really hope so. Um, as you may know, Asia as a whole, same-sex marriage is usually not legal. In fact, it's not legal in any Asian country except Taiwan. So Japan could be next. However, gay sex ha is legal in Japan since 1880. Uh, there was actually yeah a short period where it was illegal, but it's been legal most of the time in Japan, even way back when there weren't laws against it. Um, but there's still social stigma. So if you're LGBTQ+, plus, it can be hard to come out to your family. Your family may find that unacceptable or just, you know, they want you to be normal and have a happy life and they're concerned. Um, and the LGBTQ person coming out may feel uh, uncomfortable doing so. And many people, including a lot of people I know personally, don't come out. And unfortunately, in the U.S., uh, coming out was a huge part of the eventual realization of gay rights and uh, finally same-sex marriage, I'm sorry, LGBTQ rights, but um, yes, so that's not so much a factor here uh, in Japan right now, and so I, yeah, I find it impressive that these, these plaintiffs, these couples, were willing to go and be in public and do these court cases, that's pretty amazing to me. And yeah, I was talking about a poll, okay, so that showed support of same-sex marriage, Okay, so there was a poll by Dentsu Diversity Lab that in 2018, and it found 8.9% of their respondents were LGBT. That's what this says, Dentsu Diversity Lab. Um, of that group, 50.7% said they were reticent to come out to their work colleagues. Oh yeah, coming out at work's another thing, because it could affect maybe promotions and you know, in Japan, some, some companies actually are concerned if you're not married. Like, uh, maybe someone who's married would be more likely to get a promotion. So, this kind of discrimination happens. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, about half of the LGBT identifying respondents were didn't want to come out to their colleagues at work. Um, but... Some say support for same-sex marriage may be growing, and that's in the same in the same survey. Seventy-eight point four percent of all respondents said they approved of same-sex marriage. Look at that! Isn't it interesting how same-sex marriage has such high approval rates, and and yet it's so difficult for LGBTQ people in Japan to come out and just be out. It, I think it says something about. Japanese um, identity too, like I was saying. Being out isn't like a, a thing for a lot of Japanese people. You're out about many things, not to mention being gay. But okay, so uh, calls for the legislation of same-sex marriage have also come out from outside the country. Yes, of course. In 2020, the American Chamber of Commerce in Japan published published a six-page viewpoint recommending Japan's government extend LGBT couples the right to marry, which it said would remove handicaps facing companies doing business in Japan in recruiting and retaining talent and in treating the full diversity of their workplace equi equitably. So that was 2020, not so long ago, just last year. The recommendation also noted Japan has no LGBT discrimination policy. Ooh, something that human rights organizations are actively campaigning to change. Humans, right, wa <laughs> Humans Rights Watch, uh, you've heard of them, kind of famous group. Humans Rights Watch said in January that a coalition of 116 groups had sent a letter to Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga urging him to er introduce such legislation before the Tokyo Olympics are scheduled to begin this summer. So yeah, a lot of people thought because the Tokyo Olympics are coming that maybe this would change more rapidly, and maybe it will. Because um, I know Japan is not a backwards nation. 
living here myself for two years. Um, it just has been slow to change in some ways and just accepted things as they are. You know, being a gay person myself and other LGBTQ people, you can live in Japan. You can even thrive in Japan. Maybe not everyone, but, but you can. It's just you do it in secret. So, anyway, I don't think Japan wants to be known as a country where it's not okay to be LGBTQ or to get married to the same sex. I don't think they really want that because Japan thinks of itself as a leader in the world and Japan is a leader. It's one of the most successful countries in the world. So, um, I think it's going to come around. Japan's going to come around. And, uh, anyway... Now we just have to wait and see what happens in those other four cases, one in Tokyo. And if that goes well, I think that might be the biggest uh, because Tokyo is very influential in Japan overall. Uh, biggest city, you know, and uh, kind of cultural center in a lot of ways. Uh, definitely a media center. Um, anyway, let's see what happens and see what the diet does, which is like the the Japanese name for Congress here, the diet. Um, let's see what the diet says and does, and let's see if there's a Supreme Court ruling um, that comes up, possibly. But anyway, I just wanted to give you an update on that exciting news. Uh, the Hokkaido Court in Sap uh, the Sapporo District Court in Hokkaido ruled in favor of same-sex marriage. Isn't that great? I think it's great. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please like it, share it, comment, and I will answer your comments. It does take me a minute to get back to them. More than a minute. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, and if you really like my content, please feel free to uh, donate to my Patreon. A link will come up here somewhere, or it's in the description. Um, if you donate on my Patreon... I will be able to make more videos like this, and you can even request videos and tell me what you want to see. Um, and one more thing, don't forget to donate to Marriage for All Japan. Marriage for All Japan. Um, their website, oh, I just checked, www.marriageforall.jp. And give them a donation if you can, or just to uh, read, read on their website. I think there's even other ways you can support if you want to. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Have a great day, y'all.